Hello Internet, I'm finally off the ibuprofen and I'm back. Uh, we're going to make a game. Uh, I think we're going to be making Minefield. This is actually a game that I've made in the past. Uh, it didn't do so well, but that's mostly because I released it for Windows Phone right before Windows Phone kind of stopped being a thing. So uh, we're going to go back to it because I, I like the idea and hopefully make it better. Uh, it's been like a year since we've built a, a game on the channel so so i kind of want to pick that back up and, and see where it goes so that's sort of what we're going to try to do here to cover a little bit about what minefield is it's a if you ever played minesweeper it's minesweeper but with mazes uh -huh. so instead of seeing the entire board you have a player that has to find a path across the mine field to another goal uh, so the way I always did it was the player starts in the top left and the goal is in the bottom right. So you have to navigate that. And once you get to the end, you complete the level and get a new one. And that can just be randomly generated because it's it's Minesweeper. Uh, so that that's sort of what we're going for. We can probably add some other, other things to kind of spice it up and make it a little bit more fun. But for now, I just kind of want basic minefield stuff. Uh, so... What we're going to be doing is building the board in this video. I think we can do that pretty simply, so that that's sort of the the baseline. If we can get that working, I think we're we're pretty good. Uh, so let's do a create generate. Uh, let's call it just the game board. Uh, so this script is just going to describe what the game board is. It's not going to actually really do anything other than just say the aspects of what the game board is. Uh, so we should be able to open this up and really what we need is a width and a height. So ooh, that's weird. <laughs> public int width and public int height. And this way we just have a height and a width it's 2D board. So we should be good. Uh, then the general idea is public. I don't really know the best way to do this. So for now, we're just going to do a game object and we're going to make a double array. So double array is uh, an, an array of arrays. It's actually a 2D array, which gives us a width by height. And then we can index into it that way. So the advantage of doing this is then everything just gets a little bit easier. I need to give it a name. Uh, so let's call this our board pieces. And so all that the game board is going to do is give us a way to track the state of the board. This is strictly a state machine. Uh, and then all the actual playing bits will happen later. Uh, and actually generating the pieces and stuff will also happen later. And that way, hopefully, we can get some like themes and stuff going. I'm hoping this project is relatively quick. I kind of want to get like an MVP out and then kind of open source it and let you guys kind of play with it and modify it. Hopefully we're designing it in a way where that is easy. And hopefully these videos kind of help you figure out what you need to modify if you want to want to change things. <clears throat> so we need to create the board pieces. So this is going to be a new game object array with a width and a height. And that should be it. So we're initializing this array with the specific width and height. So if we say four by four, we're going to get a four by four array. So 16 elements total. And then we can actually fill that out with game objects afterwards. That's going to happen with a generator. We might be able to do that in a fun way. <laughs> huh? I hadn't really thought that far, but I think I have an idea for how we can generate things. We'll get to that in a bit. So this is really the basics of what we need. Uh, we can make this private and create a public game object array of uh, board pieces. And that's just going to get return the board pieces. So we're doing this so that uh, you can't set or overwrite the board pieces manually. You can only look them up. Uh, just as sort of a safety precaution, so we're not like overriding these things. I think that should be it though. That should be everything we need to kind of get this working. And so the next bit is going to be an actual generator. 
Uh, so we'll have our game board tile generator. I don't know what what a good name would be, so we're we're gonna go with this. Uh huh. It might work. It might not. So what I'm thinking is this is going to expose a function that is going to create a game object at a specific point and then the board is actually going to position it I think uh, so if this can oh, oh we have a prompt that's very annoying I wish that didn't happen <laughs> all right so the idea here is this needs to do something that generates a game object and returns it. So the easiest I can think of is just public game object uh, prefab. This will just be like the default one. We can spice this up like if we want to have like a cool animation of things coming in. This might be a way to handle that instead of having the game board handle that because the game board again is just the state of everything. So we don't really want it to be to be modifying things. Uh, so start update. Cool. That's going to be everything that I'm going to do there. We'll get back to that. That that isn't done by any means. Uh, but I want to do a game tile as well, which is actually going to be attached to the tile. So game board tile. And so this is actually the component we're going to be using. I should have created this earlier because now we can replace this game object stuff with the game board tile. Because we don't care about the game object, uh, that is all going to be handling itself. I don't want to be manipulating the transforms and things. I want to give the game board tile all the information it needs to modify things. So the two things it's going to have uh, that it needs to have is a public int x, a y, and a boolean for if it's revealed or not. And so that's just going to be whether the tile is flipped up or down, uh, whether you can see the value of it. So if it's adjacent to any mines or anything, whether that's true or not. Uh, there's going to be other things we're going to need to add, like a, a value. For example, 0 would just be empty. And then like 8 would be it's surrounded on all 8 sides by mines, which should never happen but it could <laughs> so that should cover all three of those we're not really going to get into revealed in this video that's just throwing it there so that it's kind of an extra field we're going to need it eventually so i'm going to put it there and so this can stay there for now game board generator is going to given a public What's the best way to do this? So we don't necessarily need to attach the game board tile to the prefab. So I can use like a standard cube, for example, and then have the game board tile get attached afterwards. The problem with doing it that way is if I do that, um, we can only use the game board tile. We can't abstract it away or have something that implement or implements it and kind of extends it. Because if we do that, it's not going to get implemented. It's not going to be used. I still think that's probably the best way. So public game object. Is this is that the best way to do that? Maybe not. Let's do. So if I return the game board tile here, there's an advantage to doing this, uh, and that is the object itself gets completely left off. So we can actually use other things other than game objects. Uh, if we want to have something that is act like a shader, for example, that was drawing the entire board, it would be possible for this to still work as long as we return a game board tile. If we start returning game objects, we'd return like the entire game object every time. And that doesn't really make any sense. This is more the data we're working with. So I think it makes more sense to do this uh, and then we will generate tile at an X and a Y position. And so those positions are going to be kind of important as we go through this because that, that's literally where things are going to go. Uh, so we just need to be kind of aware of that. 
And the way this is going to work is game object uh, spawned tile equals instantiate of a prefab. And that's it. We don't need to position it. Uh, the tiles are going to position themselves. So they're actually going to be spawned in. And then this, this game board tile is going to take the X and the Y and actually figure out where to position it. That's sort of the plan that I'm working with. Uh -huh. It has a few caveats where we need to kind of adjust this so that it fits the scene. So all scenes are going to be kind of hard coded in how they look. But I, I just think it makes more sense this way. So that, that's just what we're going to do. And then we're going to return our, this won't work. We need to add a component onto this, so spawned tile dot add component. And we're going to add the game board tile onto that. So this is actually injecting that component. So even if it is there, we're going to add a new one. Let's actually add a check. So if spawn tile dot get component uh, game board tile is null, we're going to need to clean this up because I'm act if it's already exists, I need to return it. So this isn't quite going to work, but we can work around it. All right. Yeah. So let's do, uh, we'll need to save this as our board tile, like so. And so if the board tile doesn't exist, if it's equal to null, generate a new one and say board tile equals that. We don't need this else anymore uh, because I'm changing things on the fly. Uh, we're just gonna return the board tile instead. And so this way we just save that reference to the game board tile. If it doesn't exist, add one and then return it. And then that needs to get uh, invoked from here and injected into the board pieces. And so the way we're going to do that is uh, var generator. I'm going to actually not auto detect this. I'm going to actually link to one, uh, force you to link one. So game board tile generator. And we'll just call this our generator. Then we just need two for loops. So for int i, uh, let's do x is zero from x less than our width. And then just iterate over all the x values and do the same for the, all the y values. Oops. There we go. And so this iterates over the entire board. And then we just need to say board pieces at x, y is equal to our generator dot, uh, what do we call it? Generate. Let's capitalize this because we're using C sharp, not Java. There we go. And we need to give it the x and the y. I don't know if I'm a fan of having both the tile and the board itself have the X and Y position. Uh, the board is going to give us relational stuff. So I'm going to be able to say, what's the tile to the right of it? Whereas this is more used for actually moving the tile into position. Uh, so the way this is actually going to end up working is we're going to do something like this, that transform dot position equals vector three. Uh, Let's do some math this way. So vector three dot right times X uh, plus vector three dot forward times Y. And so that will build the board theoretically. <laughs> and that should be all we need. We don't need uh, revealed or anything. It should just all work. That should handle tile generation. So I think we're good. Uh, we'll create a series of spheres, for example, that's probably going to make more sense. Because if I use uh, cubes, they'll be one by one. So they'll actually just fill it. 
Uh, we haven't hard coded in a way to do like spacing and stuff. But hopefully this gives us like the basics of a game board. So let's attach our board and our generator. We'll pull the generator and link that up. And then we'll make like an eight by eight board. So the only other thing I need is an actual game object. Let's pull in, ooh, I don't have one. So let's add, create one, game object sphere. And we'll just stick that there for now. It doesn't really matter, it's gonna go away once we actually have real things that we can reference. But for now, we could put the sphere there, delete that. And now if I run this, I should get eight spheres on any either axis. Or they can all be one after the other in the same spot. Ah, well, we didn't set the board tile. Uh, so they're all at the zero x equals zero y equals zero that's not right so we are going to fix that here so we have our board tile let's do board tile dot x equals x and board tile dot y equals y so that will actually set the positions and just because we're being thorough board tile dot revealed is false. I don't like that. We're not going to do that. Uh, <laughs> this way you can have defaults or whatever, and it's only doing the minimum of what it needs to, to be correct. Uh, that just makes more sense. So this should actually work. We should get it at zero, zero, and then in the positive directions, we should see spheres. And there should be eight on either side. So. We definitely have eight on either side, so 64 total. This should be at uh, seven, oh, that's seven zero. Okay, we're in a different orientation, that's why. There we go, seven seven. Uh, so that would be our eight eight tile because we start at zero and then we increment up. So zero index stuff is fun, but theoretically this gives us everything we need to actually build this thing. Then all we need to do is actually assign values, uh, add mines and things. But I think it's a it's a good good start. It's definitely easier than what I've done in the past for this. So yeah, I think we can leave this here. It's simple. It's designed to be simple. Uh, and hopefully the abstraction holds up. And I think we can kind of push through this pretty quickly. Uh, I'm kind of trying to just get back into things because I was sick for a week and then just been working through some other things on some other side projects in the past two videos I tried to record didn't really work out that well. So you you won't see those. Uh, this is a reference to one of them. Good luck, good luck figuring that out. That's part of the reason why it failed. <laughs> so anyway, I'll leave this here. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, this video is the first one in 4K. So let me know if there's any issues, if things appear like blurry or weird or out of focus, or if I can do that better. Uh, I think I have all the settings kind of tweaked to the point where they're good, but if I screwed that up, let me know and we can fix it more. So I'll leave this here. We'll pick it up and kind of try to push this through and get it working because uh, that that's sort of the goal. So yeah. I'll post a link to the previous version. There's a link on Game Jolt uh, to the original version, and it's also still out on the Windows Store, though it's a little bit old. <laughs> so if you guys want to check that out and kind of see what's going on, uh, I'll leave those links and you can kind of figure out where, where this project is going to head. Hopefully the graphics and stuff are a little bit better because that project has not aged the best. But yeah, I'll leave it here. So till next time. See you internet.